I'm James Carrington. My name is Ruby Pham. And I'm Sean McDonald, and we're doing uh, Papa John's Industry Analysis and why you should sell on Papa John's, even though Peyton Manning's not going to be very happy about it. So as an industry outlook uh, for the fast food, mo mostly uh, pizza delivery chains, they make up 17% of all U.S. restaurants, uh, which is a $40 billion annual uh, industry. They're a chain, and pizza chains control 47% of the market, but also control 60% of sales which shows you how, um, how well they're doing in terms of actually advertising and selling to their product to the consumers. And as a stat, 93% of people eat at least one pizza a month, which makes pizza by, by far and away the most popular dinner choice in America. Uh, new technology and innovation will help the, the industry grow even further in the future beyond these incredible stats. Thank you, Sean. Now I'm going to, quick, to give a quick overview of the company. Papa John was founded in 1985. It was headquartered in Kentucky. Um, in the recent years, Papa John has been having very impressive sales growth, which is about 30%, whereas that of the competitors is only about 15 or 20% at maximum. Papa John was also rated number one restaurant among all the limited service restaurants in terms of customer satisfaction. <coughs> Rajan is going to talk about the SWOT analysis. So for the SWOT, we start out with strengths and weaknesses. Some of their strengths, like you hear their commercials, better ingredients, better pizza, better pizza, Papa John's. So they use fresher ingredients and really promote that so people are more attracted to the, come to them instead of some of their competitors. Uh, they're very proactive in their operation strategies. So for example, they were the first pizza chain with online ordering and text message ordering to get your, uh, to get your food. Some of their weaknesses, however, are they are a much smaller market than Domino's. Domino's really uh, controls most of the market with Pizza Hut as well. And Papa John's has a really small share, and they also have unlimited menu options as opposed to their competitors who have more to offer. Now, some of their opportunities, uh, like I said before with Peyton Manning, they're the official sponsor, uh, pizza sponsor of the NFL. So they get a lot of, um, a lot of press in the Super Bowl especially. Uh, they're also room for growth that we said that they didn't have a big market share, which they don't, but they're really expanding and they think that they can get into other markets with that. Uh, some of the threats are their competitors are very strong at diversifying their products. They have more menus. Uh, they have some sit-down restaurants where Papa John's is mostly only takeout. But, uh, like Pizza Hut in China allows for Chinese food to be put on for toppings instead of just the traditional American toppings that Papa John's has done. And uh, recently, their COO, Tony Thompson, has just left the company to become CEO of Krispy Kreme. And now I'm going to talk about our financial analysis of Papa John. As you can see, we compare Papa John's to six of its peers, um, Burger King, Wendy's, Jack in the Box, McDonald's, Darden, and Denny's. Um, first up, we chose these six. Um, competitors based on their beta and forward price over earnings ratios. These are the closest to Papa John's that we could find. As you can see, Papa John's beta is 0.55, uh, Burger King's about 0.05, Wendy's 0.91. In terms of forward PE, Papa John's is 18.59, uh, that of Burger King is 26.67. Um, let me come back to the financial analysis. Um, so in terms of liquidity, we looked at current ratios and quick ratios. As you can see, Papa John's uh, current ratios and quick ratios are in about the middle range in its peer group, uh, which suggests that they are not very, very excellent at managing their short-term financing, uh, but at the same time, they are not as bad as some other players in the industry. Um, Next, we looked at debt over equity ratios. Papa John's debt over equity ratios is 0.59, uh, which is again about the middle range in its peer group. Burger King has very high debt over equity ratios of 1.79. Um, also, McDonald's has very high debt over ratio, uh, equity ratio as well as of 1.25. Uh, with this low debt over equity ratio, Papa John's um, does not have a lot of debt or leverage to worry about. However, in this case, we actually think that 
the low debt over ratio, uh, equity ratio means the company just has a different capital structure, a different strategy uh, than with them, its competitors. Um, and having too low debt over equity does not always mean a good thing because it also means that Papa John's may not be um, completely taking advantage of all the profits that financial leverage could bring about. Next, we looked at um, total asset turnover. Uh, surprisingly, Papa John's has very, very high asset turnover compared to its competitors. Papa John's asset turnover is three, whereas um, Birkin's only has points uh, 57, when it's point 63. So this means that Papa John's is very efficient in using and utilizing its resources to bring in sales. Um, next, we look at profitability, net profit margin. Even though Papa John has very high total asset turnover, its profit uh, margin is not very high compared to the competitors. Uh, Papa John's net profit margin is 5%, which is a lot lower than Burger King, which has 9.11%. Um, so Papa John's is in, again, is in the middle range uh, in terms of net profit margin compared to its peer competitors. Um, and now, we are going to talk about the valuation. Um, the first method that we use is methods of comparables. And as I showed you guys before, that is all the competitors that we choose to compare to Papa John's. Um, the company's EPS at the moment is $1.55, and its forward PE is 18.59. So according to the methods of comparables using PE multiple, the intrinsic value is, is $28.81, uh, whereas the current price is about $30, $37. So obviously, Power Jones is overpriced at the moment. All right, for the discounted cash flow models, um, we first had to calculate the growth rate, which is G, and then um, required rate of return, which is we use during CAPM. Um, the risk free rate we calculated using the 10 year treasury notes to be 2.62%. Uh, the, the return on the market, I guess 2013 had one of the best years in the past 20 years um, for a return on the market, so that was calculated at 29.6%. Uh, the beta, which uh, we got from Yahoo Finance, should be 0.22, which is pretty safe um, for a total required return of 8.56%. Now, the growth rate is a little different because the dividends have only started being given out as of last year, so the dividend growth was altered because uh, return on equity times retention ratio would be 100%. So it's just return on equity for the previous four years, um, as you can see, 100%. And then for 2013, um, the return on the ROE was 44%, and the retention ratio was 84%. So the growth rate for that year was 36.65. A five-year average is 32%. Um, so we plug all this into the uh, discounted cash flow model. Um, we use the formula free cash flow to the firm um, the over weighted average cost of capital minus G. Um, and because G was so high, you can see the total value up top here um, is actually negative, which obviously is not a good thing. Um, you can see all the calculations here. Um, everything is laid out here. The net borrowing, as you can see, has kind of fluctuated. It's gone negative and then highly positive. Um, and that's kind of, that kind of shows you how their business has been running so far in, in recent years. And if you look at historical trends, um, they're on a steady decline. Um, so as you can see, the weighted average cost, cap, uh, weighted average cost of capital was 2.93%. We calculated that. Um, and then you plug that into the formula, which we mentioned before, and the value was negative 2.79. And that is nowhere near the thirty-seven dollars um, market price. So again, it would be a sell. So our final summary would be to sell um, based most mostly off our method of comparables um, calculation because the negative two is kind of you kind of want to have a couple more solid grounds for that. So this one it just further strengthens our position of selling. Um, sorry, Peyton Manning, but we had to do it to you. Thank you very much.